Coming up, local reaction to the long-awaited near completion of road work on Highway 15 in Perry County. And in Pulaski County, another major construction project is underway at a busy intersection where a number of crashes have happened. And a cooler air mass on the way in for the end of the work week, and it also comes with a chance for showers. I'll have the latest coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Some relieving news for drivers in eastern Kentucky. A project is nearly complete after years of construction, just in time for the holidays. WIMT's Corey Sanning has more. What you see behind me is the result of five years of construction and countless hours on the clock. A project that began in 2016, this section of Kentucky Highway 15 became a long-standing pain for drivers due to lane closures and road work. But today, traffic is moving smoothly and freely as all permanent lane closures appear to be a thing of the past. Something Kentucky Highway District 10 spokesperson H.B. Elkins tells me will benefit Perry County greatly. It will make traffic move smoother and it will improve safety with the barrier wall between the lanes and the grade separated interchanges instead of the signals and the multiple lanes. It's a it's really going to be beneficial, and I think that people will realize that once they get used to how free-flowing the traffic is going to be on that section. Elkins went on to say while they have not labeled the project as completely finished just yet, the significant portion of the work is wrapped up. In Hazard, Corey Sanding, WYMT Mountain News. Elkins says the project costs close to $130 million. A busy intersection in Pulaski County is getting a major makeover. Construction is well underway to completely redo the traffic patterns at the Kentucky 80 and 461 intersection in Pulaski County. Deadly crashes in that area resulted in planning several years ago that culminated in the awarding of a major grant to help fund the nearly $50 million project. When finished, drivers coming from Somerset will stay on a new four-lane highway when heading to Mount Vernon and take an exit ramp going to London. You know, when you take that and you combine it with the congestion that's through there, you know, we've got a lot of industries that are building up, especially in the Valley Oak Complex area. The project's expected to be finished by June of 2023, barring any major weather or unforeseen delays. Roughly three miles of the project includes a new four-lane 461 between Buck Creek and 80. Well, we've seen for the past couple of days some nice conditions for some of that road work, but Unfortunately, changes are on the way, and we're starting to see a few of them right now. Out, outside at our Buffalo Mountain camera here in Perry County, we still have the sunshine. We still have the warm temperatures, but notice those clouds increasing out there, setting the stage for a pretty nice sunset. I'm putting us under a sunset watch this evening because we've got some nice sunsets on the way, I think, with some of, that, some of those high clouds moving in. London Corbin Airport seeing the high clouds as well, sitting at 73 right now, and that's where a lot of us are. Very, very mild. Monticello knocking on the mid-70s right now at 74, but a lot of us still in those low 70s. Satellite and radar, clean sweep when it comes to rainfall, but some of those high clouds starting to push into the region, and we're only going to see those increases we had later on into tonight. Mild conditions, lows in the lower 50s, as clouds are on the increase late tonight. I'll have the details on when some of those showers start to work back into the mountains coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. Kyle Rittenhouse told a Wisconsin jury he was not looking for trouble the night of August 25, 2020. Rittenhouse took the stand in his own defense today, charged with killing two men and wounding a third during Black Lives Matter protests last year. Jurors are weighing whether or not it's a case of self-defense. CBS's Nancy Chen is at the courthouse. That's right, run. 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse sobbed and appeared to hyperventilate on the witness stand Wednesday. Thanks for our break anyway. Rittenhouse was about to tell the court about his encounter with Joseph Rosenbaum, one of the two men he shot and killed on the night of August 25th, 2020. Earlier, the defendant told jurors Rosenbaum threatened to kill him. She screamed, if I catch any of you. Alone, I'm going to kill you. 
Rittenhouse said at one point Rosenbaum had his hands on the teen's fully loaded semi-automatic rifle, and Rittenhouse ultimately fired at him four times. Why were you trying to get to the police? So I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. Rittenhouse also shot two others who came after him, killing one. You intentionally used deadly force against Joseph Rosenbaum, correct? Yes. Prosecutors zeroed in on Rittenhouse's weapon and whether he used deadly force to protect property. That line of questioning prompted a sharp rebuke from the judge. And the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of you your... should have come and asked. Rittenhouse could face life in prison if convicted on the most serious charge against him. Nancy Chen, CBS News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Definitely an emotional day in court today. The prosecutor also sparked the judge's ire when he brought up Rittenhouse's pretrial silence on the shootings, which is protected by the defendant's Fifth Amendment rights. The former president of Georgetown College appeared in court this morning in Lexington. The hearing centered on an emergency protective order filed against William Jones by a female employee at the college. In that order, the victim says that she and Jones were on a work trip and staying inside the Marriott Hotel in downtown Indianapolis. She says that Jones sexually harassed and sexually assaulted her in his hotel room after she told him no a number of times. Jones is also facing accusations of inappropriate behavior from another female college employee and other conduct violations of Jones's employment agreement. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning people about the measles. The agency says the highly contagious virus is once again a global threat. That's because some 22 million babies around the world missed getting a measles vaccine during the pandemic. The CDC estimates the measles vaccine prevents more than 30 million deaths each year. Still, more than 60,000 people die each year from measles, and most of those deaths are among young children. Vice President Kamala Harris paid her respects Wednesday to U.S. service members at Surin American Cemetery. She's on a five-day trip in France to revitalize the French-American relationship. At the cemetery, Harris participated in a wreath-laying ceremony. She and her husband, Doug Emhoff, also walked out to several grave sites of Americans who served in World War I and World War II. As we mark Veterans Day tomorrow, the American Heart Association is raising awareness about the challenges female veterans face that can increase their cardiovascular disease risk. CBS's Elise Preston has one veteran story. Returning home after deployment was difficult for Army veteran Denny Ellsworth. I came back and didn't treat my PTSD, nor did I even realize that I had PTSD. Without the coping skills, I turned to alcohol. In addition, a life-threatening infection caused heart failure and left the young mother in need of a transplant. I ultimately got denied because I didn't seek help for my PTSD and I continued to drink. I definitely engaged in lifestyle choices that directly contributed to keeping me in heart failure. The American Heart Association and the Veterans Healthcare Administration are raising awareness about the cardiovascular disease risks female veterans face. Women veterans compared to non-veteran women, um, you know, actually have higher rates of some traditional risk factors for heart disease, such as hypertension, diabetes, obesity. Dr. Sally Haskell says female veterans also have higher rates of depression and anxiety. Those conditions impact the brain and the body, but also some coping mechanisms, smoking or having substance abuse issues or not being able to manage their weight and those things to increase their cardiovascular risk. In 2018, Ellsworth had an internal defibrillator implanted, which detected two cardiac arrests while she slept. She eventually got the help she needed, including trauma therapy. Really focused on that PTSD and the trauma that I had encountered that I had been avoiding. Ellsworth has been sober for nearly two years, and along with diet, exercise, and meditation, she's keeping her heart healthy. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Doctors say women should check in with their health care providers to identify and manage their risk factors as early as possible.
A new study shows COVID-19 antibodies in mothers are present in their breast milk. Researchers followed more than 75 lactating mothers for three months. Some of them had antibodies from contracting the actual virus, while others received an mRNA COVID vaccine. Those antibodies were present in the breast milk from both sets. The study did not look at whether the antibodies are passed to nursing infants, but it did show they were viable enough to neutralize live wild type coronavirus. The results were published in the journal JAMA Pediatrics. Coming up on First at Four, a new report shows how much Americans are spending on everyday items, what it means for grocery shoppers, and the cost of those upcoming Thanksgiving dinners. And grab the rain and cold weather gear because we've got some big changes on the way starting tomorrow. I'll have the details on the way.